Hi guys, it's George and Jake at EDC Leather. Uh, we're going to be doing a little pancake batter tonight. We're going to have a little bit of fun. We're going to do a thumb break. Uh, thumb breaks are a topic that doesn't come up a whole lot on uh, some of the forums. And there's some very specific customers that need that. First customer, agencies, law enforcement agencies oftentimes require an additional means of retention. Thumb break serves that purpose. The next guy that needs this... Um, may have had so, uh, shoulder surgery or a torn ro rotator cuff or something of that nature and no longer has the strength to draw through a retention holster. Uh, and another one, perhaps the most common, is the client that has a light or light laser combo that is actually wider than the frame. Well, when it's wider than the frame, we can't pull retention here because then we're trying to pull that lighter laser through uh, that narrow area of the leather. So there's a problem. Leaving only the ejection port for retention and probably just not the wisest choice. So a thumb brake is a really good solution for that. They're easy to make, they're easy to build. We're gonna do it, uh, this here on a Glock 17. So uh, let's get after it. We're gonna use uh, several tools. We're gonna use a set of Parker tools. Now, for those that got his original tool set that was just for the pancakes, it's great. He has another tool set out uh, for his Avengers, and <laughs> we're going to be using these tools uh, on this holster tonight. Belt loop tool. I'm going to use my protractor. Uh, my favorite little French curve. That's my favorite one. He's my baby. A ruler. A pencil. And I'll darken in lines with a Sharpie to make them a little easier to see. So uh, let's get after this here real quick. Uh, we're going to go ahead and want to generate a uh, an eight degree cant. It's a good it's a good degree of cant for this length of barrel. Uh, works for most of our law enforcement customers and anybody wearing between three and four o'clock in that area right there. Um, well, I guess I should have mentioned it. We're going to use an EDC stitch trace. So it's a trace of the firearm. This is a one inch grip clearance. That is a recommendation. You can actually, you know, you can get a little narrower if you need to, if you're trying to really seat deep, but we're gonna be fine tonight. So, what I'm gonna do with this right now, let's just try to get a reference for where I want my belt to be. Stitch line first, then your belt location. That's what you're gonna to have to do every single time, and I want eight degrees. So I'm going to line my protractor up on the stitch line on the frame side and I'm going to see where I'm coming down to. I want eight degrees. And that is eight degrees right there. So I'm going to punch that down, kick my little ruler out of the way. I'm going to get a mark done right here. Okay. And I'm going to come over here with my protractor. I'm going to count to 8 degrees. I'm going to make another little mark. Yep, I had to check it make sure I did that. So I got a mark for the center and a mark there. I'm going to simply connect the lines. That's the top of my belt. So I've got a stitch line, now I know where my belt is, and uh, this is all I need to start any given holster. So now, by using that technique, we're great. We're not impinging onto the uh, grip clearance there. We're gonna learn how to measure an inch. And we're going to get ourselves an inch right there. And I'm going to give myself an inch over here. Really thick, uh, really thick, chunky gun, thick trigger guard. So I have my marks of where my one inch is. I'm going to line my protractor up on my belt. I'm going to make the mark at 270 degrees. The mark here. I'm going to do the same thing out here. Line up on my belt. 
make a mark, make a mark. What we're achieving here is I always want my belt slots to be perpendicular to the belt or to 90 degree to the belt. All right, so now we're going to take in place our belt slots. On the uh, newest version of Parker's Tools, you're going to find there's a line engraved down the middle. This lets me line that up on my pattern. Get my belt slot straight. So now I have an outside loop and I can have my belt slot marked out to where we can punch it out. All we got to do now is get the rest of a holster shaped object happening here. For this pattern I want to come out about a half an inch. From the stitch lines. Okay. And I'm going to grab a French curve here. And I'm going to find a shape that I kind of like. That's got a pretty good feel to it. I'll grab another one of Parker's tools here. That's not bad. This uh, ought to thrill Parker to no end because I'm actually doing straight belt slots tonight. And since Parker is not a big fan of contours, this ought to make him happy. Alright, so now I've got the lower part of my holster body done and it's time to place the stitch line. This tool here, each one of these legs is uh, one inch wide. I want my thumb brake to come oh, about quarter to three eighths of an inch Yeah, that'll be a little closer to a half inch, but for my back panel, right about there, guys. And I got it at a little bit of an angle. Now, I'm drawing a great big line here. Now, I'm going to come down to here, and I'm using those lines to line up the tool. I am setting where the snap is going to be placed in the thumb brake. I'm centered because of this tool, but notice I'm also... on the flat of the firearm. See where we're at? We're right about here. Okay, so I've got a good space. That's a half inch circle is what your snap is. So we're in there pretty good. I'm pretty pleased with that. So now, we've got to come around from this ear and transition to the thumb brake. Okay, that doesn't look too half bad, does it? Here I'm just playing with curves. Where's my favorite little curve at? And I want to, I want to join these two lines in an attractive manner. feels pretty good. Now I want to come out from here and I want to end up on that ear. Mm. 
gonna use we're gonna create a compound curve here alrighty let's grab a Parker curve no I wanted to be a little more aggressive than that back to my favorite little tool there we go now we're coming somewhere Guys, this curve is probably all this French curve. I'm just, this is the tool that I'm used to using. I can erase that line. So there's the back of my holster coming up to the thumb brake. We're going to trace this out, make sure this thing's easier to see. I'm sorry, I was off a little bit there. Now you can see that shape right there. Next thing we got to do is we got to put a throat on this holster. I'm continuing to use a pencil, it's the way I've always done it. I've seen some people use a colored pencil for this part of the operation. This here is going to be the front strap. And it is going to just take off. And the term we use for this is I want you to cut this wild. Give her a good, you know, eight inches or so. This strap continues on because it's got to wrap all the way around the firearm. So now you can see here where that's going. Once again, playing with some shapes. And what I want to do is to keep this thing a little more flexible. I'm dropping it below. This is the front panel. It does not have to be symmetrical with the back panel. I want this part, I want this strap to be flexible. Because when you draw the firearm, this is going to pull away. All right, so this is the front panel. It cuts wild. Keeps this strap narrow and long. The back panel back here. Now we're going to go back to the back. We've pretty much got our pancake holster done. Front panel, back panel. But now I need to create a hinge point, okay? So we're working with the back panel now, these lines here. Working with the back panel. And I want to create a hinge. In order to do that, fellas, what I'm going to do is get into this area right here. I'm going to get this handy dandy. Trying to find the shape that you like is sometimes a little bit of a challenge. I'm matching my belt. I'm coming up. I want this hinge to be above the belt. And I want it to stay inside of the stitch lines.
Okay. This shape right here, fellas. We'll draw little circles on it so you can see it. This is another layer of six to eight ounce leather back behind. It reinforces this. We're also gonna use a thumb brake steel, which I'll be one out here in a moment to show you. Uh, but when we do this and your thumb strikes that thumb brake, it's going to hinge back at that point, allowing the firearm to be drawn and breaking the snap. But really guys, that's all there is to a thumb brake. We know that we wanna create a hinge. We know we wanna reinforce the back. We know that we want our snap on the flat of the firearm, okay? And we know that our strap in the front has got to have room to wrap over. So let's take a, a, a quick break here. I'll be right back. I'm going to go get that thumb brake steel. All right, guys. We're going to finish out our thumb brake with a quick discussion of hardware. This is a thumb brake stiffener right here. This goes in between the two layers of leather on the uh, back of the brake. Notice this has a slot on this one here. And this is something you're going to actually start to find on our website here in the next few weeks. We're going to put together thumb brake kits that consist of the durable snaps or hard pull snaps from Scoville, a snap back protector, and a, a thumb brake steel. So let's go over these here real quick. This here will go in between the two pieces of leather. Here you can see there's a piece of steel inlaid between the two pieces of leather. Okay. And uh, our snap goes through that. And then down here, there's actually no need. You can either rivet that through to the back or not, but your stitching is going to hold it in place in your snap well. So this provides additional rigidity. At that point then, a female snap, the post will come from the back. And then a female snap will be inset into the hole that you punched out. This keeps you from putting any uh, scratches on your client's firearm. Uh, like I said, on my old Rock Island, I really don't care, but they're fancy dancy uh, firearm. They may want any, not want any scratches on it. Next thing we do is that we put on the male part of the snap on the front panel. This goes like this. But notice, back of this is steel. Here's where the handy dandy little poly snapback protector. After you set the snap, put that in there, give it a whack of the hammer, and that gives a nylon pad for the firearm to go across. Pretty simple, huh? Like I said, we're planning on putting these things together as kits. Uh, I've ordered in the wrong plastic dealies last time. Uh, had to, uh, so, <laughs> had to refund a bunch of money and we're sending new ones out as soon as they get in. But I hope that this was a helpful uh, little tutorial uh, if you've got any questions, hit me up on holsters for handguns or hit up Parker because he's retired and just loves to uh, do nothing but help people. Um, if you want to get a hold of me, you're going to want to get a hold of me on the phone because I'm driving in the truck or I'm sitting in the shop and uh, drinking coffee and uh, being rude to everybody. So I hope this has helped. Have a good time. Enjoy.